Hello, this is Brian Rosner with Biomed Publishing Group. A few months ago, there was a guy who worked at CNET, uh, CNET.com. It's an online technology review company. It's one of the best websites on the internet. You can go there and find out about new camcorders or digital cameras or computers and that type of thing. This guy was driving down uh, from Oregon to California, and he decided to take a shortcut. It was in the middle of winter. And he went up over a mountain pass that was otherwise uh, a fine place to travel during the summertime, but in the wintertime it happened to be a fairly treacherous place, and he missed some signs and um, kind of got lost in the mountains. It started snowing really hard. His car got stuck, and him and his family and two children and his wife were up there pretty stuck. Um, so he decided to venture off, uh, get out of his car, <clears throat> and start to try to find help. To make a long story short, he ended up walking about five miles around in a big circle, and he actually died about a mile away from his car. So he walked around in a huge circle, and his life was basically lost for nothing. Now, I wouldn't say nothing. He was a very noble, valiant guy. He was trying to save his family. I probably would have done the same thing. But in analyzing that situation, you could see that a, a fair number of different confusions arised in order to lead to such a tragic end. Um, the first confusion was that he didn't know where he was in the mountains and that he didn't know the pass was closed. The second confusion was whether to stay with his car or not or whether to go. Um, the third confusion was uh, where he was walking and his sense of direction and he ended up walking in a big circle and, and passing away right near his car in a creek bed in some freezing cold water. Um, <clears throat> in my opinion, sort of the same thing is happening with the Marshall Protocol. And what I mean is that right now we are currently walking around in the snow in a medical community sense, totally confused, having taken several missteps uh, before this event. And what I mean is that there's a lot of confusion about vitamin D right now. And the confusion has resulted from decisions that were made a while ago, and that confusion resulted from decisions that were made before that, and so on, in, in a similar way to the example I just gave you about the, the CNET worker. And what basically happened um, is uh, the me mainstream medical community um, basically tests for the wrong type of vitamin D. So they test all these people with chronic illness, and find out that they're deficient in vitamin D and they say we need to have these people with Lyme disease and with sarcoidosis and with chronic fatigue syndrome um, supplement more vitamin D. Their vitamin D is low. The problem is that vitamin D comes in a couple of different forms and the form that they were testing was indeed low and is indeed low in a lot of different Lyme disease sufferers. Um, however, another form of vitamin D called 125-dihydroxy vitamin D, which is actually similar to a secosteroid hormone like uh, cortisone, which we know does hurt Lyme disease sufferers. Um, doctors have been erroneously prescribing cortisone for a long time to the detriment of their patients, and now we know not to do that. Well, anyway, if only the medical community would start testing for that type of vitamin D, they would find that it was very high in people with Lyme disease and other chronic illnesses. And that's because people with Lyme disease and other chronic illnesses, the cell wall deficient bacteria in their body inside the macrophage cells, which are a type of immune cell, basically get out of control and convert the type of vitamin D that we find is too low into the type of vitamin D that we find is too high. So you have this vitamin D being converted into the wrong type of vitamin D that acts like a steroid hormone. And so if they just test for this vitamin D, They'll never know that this vitamin D is, is too high. So to make a long story short, today I'm talking to you about the Marshall Protocol, which is a therapy that uh, aims to intentionally reduce vitamin D, if you can believe that or not. Now this treatment has been a, one of the most helpful treatments I've ever used. I talk about it in my book, The Top 10 Lyme Disease Treatments. Um, it's one of the main therapies in that book. And the medical community right now is totally polarized on the Marshall Protocol. One side of the community thinks that it's uh, basically from the devil and that it's a horrible program and that it leads to you know, osteoporosis and all the other types of things that vitamin D deficiency cause. And the other type of the medical community thinks that this is the best thing for chronic disease. It, it helps you prevent osteoporosis and it actually balances those vitamin D levels back to where they need to be. 
I am over here in the side of the medical community that believes the Marshall Protocol is a good protocol and is beneficial. And my goal today is not to convince you that that's the case because I'm not a doctor and I'm not trying to convince you anything about your health or what you should do. But what I do want to do is show you some interesting articles on uh, vitamin D. And while I know it's probably a lot easier to read, a, or excuse me, to watch a video blog like this, it's kind of like watching TV, I am going to ask you to do a little bit of homework today. And that is to um, click on the links that I have up above in the text of this, this blog post. Or if you're reading this on YouTube or watching this on YouTube, you can find those links um, on my blog, which is limevideoblog.com. And you'll see some very well organized, very informative information on how we got confused about vitamin D and basically why there's this polarized uh, opinion in the medical community. So um, to make a long story short, the Marshall Protocol helped me a lot. Um, at the very heart of the Marshall Protocol is this controversy about, about vitamin D. And on the, in the one camp, you have people that say, give Lyme disease sufferers more vitamin D. And in the other camp, in the Marshall Protocol camp, the camp that I'm in, you have people saying, no, there's already way too much of this vitamin D hormone in their body, so you've got to take it away. Um, so I've been on the Marshall Protocol for the last two or three years, and I've really found that it has just been basically what my body has needed. Um, and, I, you know, I, again, I can't tell you what to do, but... Um, I suggest you look into these resources. And to give you a little bit of a background on a personal sense, the reason that this came up for me is I go to a early morning uh, men's group. Uh, it's a Christian accountability group. It's about 6.30 in the morning. I really don't like getting up that early. But a friend of mine who's a physician um, heard about what I was doing, and he said, um, you know, how could you possibly be depriving your body of vitamin D like that? Don't you know about these studies? And that got me thinking, you know, hey, I better really bring forward the controversy about vitamin D in my video blog and really share with you what research is available. So check out the links um, that I provide above in this post and really realize that uh, you need to do your homework on this. The medical community is walking around confused out in the snow. So I'm Brian Rosner with Biomed Publishing Group. I hope you found this video blog post to be informative. Please remember, I am a journalist and not a medical professional, so this video is for informational and educational purposes only. It's not for you to base medical decisions on, and I hope that um, you're able to come to a conclusion about the Marshall Protocol when you have all the facts, and um, if you have any comments, please do post them below. So uh, we'll see you later.